Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Battleships are giant armored warships built to rule the waves with their incredible firepower and heavy armor. These ships were also known as capital ships for a nation's fleet. They were armed with formidable guns, often designed to fling shells hundreds of miles. Excellent tools not only for distant power projection, but also for home coastline defense in large-scale enemy fleet engagement. The first battleship, known as Dreadnoughts, marked a revolution in naval warfare with their advanced armament and speed. However, their importance truly peaked during World War II, a period that saw the deployment of some of the most formidable battleships ever constructed. These included ships such as the USS Missouri of the Iowa class, a combination of speed, armor, and firepower with her 16-inch guns. The battleship served the country from 1944, playing important roles in Pacific battles before hosting Japan's formal surrender on September 2, 1945, the end of the long and costly battle against occupation and empire during World War II. Although the battleship era of power has diminished significantly due to the shift to the U.S. Navy aircraft carriers and destroyers equipped with missiles, ships like the USS Nimitz are respected universally for their historic landmarks. Today, it's common for these massive ships to require some moderate assistance from specialized tugboats to simply maneuver within tight harbors from their sheer size and tenor, allowing for a limited range of motion. Tugboats combine power with extreme precision to control the motion of battleships within harbor space to maneuver the legendary honor of docking in the narrowest, busiest waterways, merely historically immense. These huge battleships were designed to control the oceans through their engines and guns. Their size and limited agility made maneuvering in tight harbors a significant challenge. This is where tugboats play an important role. Tugboats have impressive power to weight ratios, which are effective for precise maneuverability. Simply because a warship, however powerful, still found itself sometimes limited to precision movement in tight quarters due to size and momentum. Tugboats are built for precision movement and, even better, might rely on advanced propulsion systems to push, pull, and guide a gigantic ship with both efficiency and accuracy. In busy and often narrow harbors, tugboats might have been deemed necessary to safely dock and undock a warship, especially where the size and momentum of a battleship came into question. Tugboats come in various types depending on their function, including harbor, seagoing, and river tugs. Thank you. 
Seagoing tugs, also known as ocean tugboats, are designed for long distance towing and are built to withstand harsh ocean conditions. One notable example is the USS Tawasa, a fleet tug weighing 1,255 tons, which played a crucial role in towing a nuclear depth charge during Operation Wigwam in 1955. Depending on the situation, these types of tugs often tow ships using a wire cable or a synthetic rope. There are also specialized tugs like the notch tug and integrated tug and barge units, which are designed to push or lock into a barge for more efficient towing. Harbor tugs are smaller vessels designed primarily to maneuver large ships at ports and harbors. Harbor tugs have advanced propulsion systems, such as azimuthal stern drives or cycloidal drives, allowing 360 degree rotation for positional control. A modern design of a tugboat is the Spitzer Tur, a Danish tugboat constructed in 2011 for escorting ships in European ports. The harbor tug function extends to escorting tankers and other large ships through hazardous or narrow areas and ensuring safety during harbor maneuvering. Tugboats, either large or small, perform a critical function in global maritime operations. Whether the job is to navigate through a busy port or assist in working with heavy duty ocean towing, Apart from understanding the types and uses of tugboats, it's equally important to understand how the process of moving a gigantic aircraft carrier or cargo ship is accomplished. The first step is to have the tugboat surround the larger ship in order to establish points of force where needed. In the case of towable vessels, the tugboat would attach long, flexible, and durable tow lines of varying diameters to a winching system on the large boat. A winch component would be a connector to adjust the length of tow lines needed since the time to maneuver will differ from one ship maneuver to the next. The engines of the tugboat are so powerful that they can exert a great deal of force, able to pull the ship through narrow canals, crowded ports, or any restricted waters where large ships may have difficulty on their own. The maneuverability and thrust of today's tugboat systems significantly contribute to the ability to precisely control a large ship when navigating small and congested environments. In addition, the vessels that may push the navigation of larger vessels are called pushers, which among other designs include cushioned bows to buffer against excessive pushing on a larger ship. The pusher tugboats can place themselves onto and at the aster or side of the vessels. Then apply resistance against the comfort level of the larger ship by pushing to maneuver to the destination adeptly. Regardless of whether the operation is pulling versus pushing and where control approaches precision shift, the averse ability to turn on a dime or nearly instantaneously with a degree of speed is attributable to the engageable propeller system of a tugboat.
This engages in degrees and change encountered with 360 degree propellers. Recently, the power to push and pull has seen a real technical advancement, with some tugboats being hybrid powered or powered by dual systems, including LNG, which both save money with fuel, but are overall more environmentally friendly. The combination of speed, technology, and power ultimately make tugboats operatively essential, co-working with the port facility to board and unload some of the largest ships in the world. Handling a giant ship is challenging, and sometimes accidents happen in cases of mishandling, as seen in one of the famous incidents in the Suez Canal. A large vessel grounded in the Suez Canal blocked one of the most important shipping routes in the world. This required urgent efforts and operations to refloat the vessel and resume an important part of global trade. The Suez Canal Authority deployed construction equipment to dredge and excavate some of the surrounding dredge sediment to float the vessel. The dredging involved removing dredge sediment from around the vessel's bow to deepen the channel to 18 meters. In doing this, the vessel will eventually be freed from the bottom sediment. The dredging process involved the dredger, mash hour, desanding and desludging beneath the vessel. At the same time, long arm excavators on pontoons were used to carry out the infill excavation closer to the vessel where the dredger could not, with a minimum of a 10 meter distance to keep safe. Depth sounds of geometric monitoring were made with sonar technology to confirm the depth of the progress made with the dredger and excavator operations. Managing the movement of massive vessels like aircraft carriers, cargo ships, or those transiting through the Suez Canal requires a delicate balance of power, precision, and coordination. While tugboats and advanced dredging technology play crucial roles in routine operations, accidents can still occur as seen with the recent incident in the Suez Canal. As global maritime traffic continues to grow, the importance of these operations and the expertise required to execute them remain critical to keeping the world's supply chains moving smoothly. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.